Hi, this is Tom Broussard. It's August 17th, 2021. It's good to see everybody. Hopefully you've had a good summer. Um, here in Maine, it has been hot for a while, but it's gotten nice and cool now. Um, but across the country, of course, there's all kinds of changes with, uh, with weather for all of us. Um, this, uh, this article is aphasia recovery, the illusion of reaching one's plateau for people with aphasia. Um, when people have a stroke and aphasia, it takes a long time for the brain to get better. Uh, and it takes a long time to uh, begin to realize how the brain works and how you yourself is getting better. Because that's one way of you understanding what's happening. And there's another way of how other people look at you. And they make other decisions, or at least decisions, about um, how you are improving and what is uh, driving that improvement going forward. And I had been told by my nurse at the hospital, as best I could understand, as best my wife had heard, that it would take at least a month for my brain to settle down. And sure enough, um, it was a, about a month later when I started with my uh, speech therapy uh, sessions. And I could, now that I could sleep better, that was part of the issue uh, after the stroke for about a month. I couldn't sleep well. Um, I really couldn't do much. Uh, and I couldn't really remember a whole lot of it either for that month. Um, but uh, my brain did start to settle down and I started therapy about a month, uh, about a month later. Um, the, the process of which I was going through, although I was completely unaware of this process by which I would get, quote, better, uh, there are stages of how the brain works. And there's the natural component of recovery, uh, just like if you have a bruise on your, on your arm or you've broken a, a bone, um, there's not a whole lot you can do other than rest and, uh, st and, and uh, stabilizing a bone if that's what's broken and nature takes over. So there's a large component of, of the brain getting better uh, by nature. And then there's another a couple of phases that require a lot of effort uh, to continue to, to create the fuel that is needed to get better when it comes to language in particular. Um, so the first stage is called spontaneous recovery and it takes between six to 12 months uh, for the brain to get better. It is often called diastasis, which is called shocked throughout in Greek. And that is because not only is there the stroke itself, um, whenever it happened in your brain, but because of the way the brain it works, because everything is connected, um, the, the uh, connectivity between where the, where the assault was uh, and somewhere other places in the brain they're all connected, but without the blood, because if you lose, lose the blood here, the cells start to die. Uh, and each of those cells that are dying are connected to other cells that are also losing uh, oxygen, losing blood further and further away in the brain. And so you can have, as they say, uh, by, by the uh, definitions, shocked throughout, there are other places in your brain that are still connected to the original um, part that's that's been destroyed. Um, they're still connected, but they don't have enough blood uh, to operate, although they are still connected and are aware, as it were, aware of the other cells that are connected to the ones, quote, far, far away. So the, that's what they shocked throughout, or what is also called damage at a distance. Um, and as the brain, um, um, gets better, um, gets rid of the inflammation, absorbs the dead tissues, uh, then the uh, diastasis reverses and starts to um, uh, uh, recreate the whatever blood that can come through can start to do what it had been doing before. So that's the first stage. And it's quite, I'll say quite fast, uh, if it's six to to six to 12 months. In my case, at least one month that I was becoming more aware, I felt healthier, I could sleep better. That is one indication of health. Um, and it takes a longer time in terms of being so tired that you can't even walk well walk. Um, 
So there's a lot of physical issues that are connected to the brain issues that all are part of, of, of uh, recovery. Um, the, the following uh, phases um, are, take, are much slower um, because the, either the existing neuropath pathways can change or you need to create new pathways with new brain matter with neuroplasticity. And I've mentioned it before, experience dependent neuroplasticity um, and uh, inducing plasticity. And that requires um, uh, thought and cognitive activity that induce plasticity. So uh, that really is the fuel that continues to uh, help a person learn uh, and grow and improve their language going forward, but you need the fuel that comes as a result of the um, uh, 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 the activities, the cognitive activities with each of the modalities of reading, writing, and speaking. The um, uh, the the difference why I call this an illusion. They've also refute, referred to it as a myth of of the plateau. Uh, sadly, I'll say sadly, just the way it is. Um, uh, clinicians, uh, medical people will refer to people like us. Uh, I think not. I think it's been said to me before that at a certain point you reach this plateau and you quote won't get any better. Um, well, I think what's happening, why it's called what I call the illusion, is that um, they, because the, the beginning of, of, of health inducing activities is all naturally done, it goes much faster. It goes at the, at the speed at which the body allows it to do. And then it takes much, much longer for the, the second and surge, surge uh, stages, what I refer to as a, a three stage rocket ship. Uh, that that first stage lifts everything up as best it can to get away from gravity, basically. And then the second and third uh, stages of a rocket, uh, metaphorically, of the, of the uh, recovery processes um, require um, a much longer uh, time in terms of a slow ascent to recovery that demands uh, not just what nature can provide, but now pro demands what um, uh, the self-sustaining fuel that the body has, that the brain has, um, to induce plasticity. So it means that it requires effort uh, to continue to induce and continue um, uh, inducing more plasticity, and as a result, more um, brain matter, and inducing more learning as a result of all of what is otherwise compared to something that was very fast at the beginning and something that is so slow now that people begin to say, well, you know, you did well here, but now it's obviously coming down. So you're reaching this plateau, not really realizing that it's really this impression that yes, it was fast at the beginning, it was done that way by, by the way the body works. And now the next phases are much slower. But because of this impression that it was fast, now it's slow, you begin to think, well, now it's slow and now it's going to end. Um, and that, the comparison, is what allows people to think that you have, quote, reached your plateau. Uh, when, in fact, what's really happening is that the, uh, the, the, the rocket ship, using that metaphor, gets to that point in space, as it were, that it now starts starts all over again, not really all over because they can be quite overlapping, um, but it starts a slow and, and steady uh, ascent into uh, improvement. Given that, um, given that if it's self-sustainable, uh, meaning the effort that, re that is required, um, that a person with aphasia cannot not learn. Uh, as, as much as uh, we spent a long time uh, becoming more aware of the of the deficits we had, and as we got better about those deficits, almost uh, tantamount to beginning to understand that you are learning about those deficits, and being able to see them allows you to see that you are seeing improvement in those deficits. Um, now we begin to learn that even in the games that we do with various groups that is A, it's a lot of fun 
uh, but B, it's highly therapeutic. Um, and as a result, it helps induce plasticity, uh, even with games. But people with aphasia can learn a new game, a new story, a great joke, make new friends. And then for all of those people, you're learning. You can't not learn. So the fact that we are told that we've reached our plateau, uh, clearly that's not right. Um, I do know how difficult it is, and depending on how severe people are, uh, I continue to be incredibly lucky that I wasn't as uh, severe as so many of my friends, but even my friends who at one point were mute are now able to speak better and they are aware that they understand what's happening and can now better express what they couldn't express before. Um, knowing for all of us that that long, steady ascent is the rest of our lives. We continue to work hard on, on what we do uh, to improve our, our language. And depending on, uh, on the length of time and the severity, then we can see that we continue to get better no matter what people say that you have, quote, reached your plateau, when in fact you continue to learn on a daily basis based on every single impulse in the brain that, that creates a new impulse uh, towards one activity or another that continues to grow new dendrites and synapses, as I've said before, new branches and leaves uh, that continue to create the um, um, brain matter that allows us to learn uh, as we go forward. But people with aphasia cannot learn, cannot not learn at any stage. Uh, it is this illusion that having reached one's plateau, uh, when there are so many mountains able to climb, we have to keep telling, we have to learn as best we can about how it works for us. We also have to do what we can to express what we can see and show that, experience that, explain that to other people who can be very good at what they do in the medical world, but they still don't know what we can see. And they still don't know what we can see and then express as best we can. As we get better, we can express better to those people who would like to know more, but they too uh, have educated in a different way. So they don't really even begin to re realize people with aphasia are that can better express the experience that we all have had that again, the medical community, as good as they are at what they do, they still haven't really fully figured out that they can learn an awful lot from us. So all of us with stroke and aphasia have to do the best they can, gather with all of us in groups, gather with us on these Zoom calls and YouTube to continue to tell other people about all of us in the group, as well as helping the clinicians, the medical community, the healthcare community, how the brain works from the perspective of all of us who actually saw the damage and were lucky enough to express it when we couldn't express it before. Thank you very much once again. Have a good summer, continued summer, and I will see you in September. Take care of yourselves. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.